Hello guys, this is Vaish. So the Plum series uh, today is episode number seven because we have completed six days and uh, including CSAT, all the subjects were done and now we will do the current affairs part. Okay, so subjects plus current affair plus CSAT, everything we are trying to cover free of cost, five five MCQs a day, and this will going to this is going to help you clear the prelims easily. Okay, so I'll do June current affairs. I have put uh, episode one of June because June itself there are a lot of questions. So I'll maybe uh, next Sunday again I'll do June current affairs another five questions. Okay, so that will uh, change according to the content. So please uh, see to it that you are watching every day because it's not like one subject will alone help you uh, clear the prelims. Okay, every subject you have to study, and all our teachers are doing all the subjects free of cost daily night 9 pm please join live and also like and comment because more participation is there only then we'll feel like continuing this okay so the first one two three months we'll anyway do it but if the participation is less then we'll have to shut it down so please see to that you are uh, supporting us and all these uh, topics which you see free lecture playlist are there you can go and watch them and you can whatsapp me to get the free foundation to begin with okay the uh, beginners should always start with the foundation so MCQ 1 of current affairs as I, as I told June 2022 current affairs first question is which of the following are true about Shangri-La dialogue it is Asia's premier defense summit which is held in Singapore it was launched after the 2008 global recession it is hosted by FATF along with Singapore business forums India Pakistan USA UK are some of the participants of the summit so it's a four statement type question so elimination can work so see whether you can eliminate anything one three only two three only two only and one four only and again there are no options which is uh, they are like one two three four so obviously at least one statement or two statement has to be wrong okay so see to it that you are eliminating it correctly and arriving at the right answer So the answer here is D that is one four only okay because the launch date is wrong and also the host is wrong okay remaining participants and the uh, location is correct. So it is Asia's uh, premier defense summit in which ministers debate on pressing security challenges in the region and engaged in important bilateral talks in the meeting meters uh, sorry ministers come up with fresh approaches together the shangri la dialogue is officially known as asia security summit okay so in upsc exam if they ask you like ass or asia security summit you should understand they are talking about the shangri la dialogue it is held annually but could not be held in 2020 and 21 okay that is why this year's is very very important it is hosted by the international institute for strategic studies that is iiss okay not by fatf okay the dialogue is usually attended by defense ministers, military chiefs of Asia Pacific states and permanent head of ministries. It was launched in 2002, okay, in collaboration with Singapore government, not after the 2008 global recession. So statement two and three are wrong, answer is one and four, okay. Name of the forum was derived from Shangri-La Hotel in Singapore. This dialogue has been held in the hotel since 2002. Okay, so Shangri-La Hotel is a very big hotel uh, brand if you know in the world. It is there across uh, countries and cities. In India also it's there. I think in Bangalore it is there. So it is there in multiple places. You should know it's a very big brand of hotel groups. Summit seeks to cultivate a sense of community among most important policy makers in defense and security community of the region. The forum has become a significant independent forum to exchange views on international security policies. Apart from the host nation, that is apart from Singapore, participating country include all these things. Okay, Australia, Cambodia, Brunei. Chile, France, Canada, China, India. Okay, so whatever there in the question, India, Pakistan, UK, USA. Okay, these are the things which I mentioned in the question. So all of these are there. So try to memorize these country names. Okay, so it will be almost all the Southeast Asian countries and along with that, uh, this uh, Russia and uh, USA and uh, uh, some European uh, like UK, Canada will be there. Okay, so just um, uh, try to memorize. It's a very like important, important countries alone will be there. So it's very easy to memorize also. So the 19th dialogue was hosted in Singapore. Prime Minister of Japan was the one who gave the keynote address. It is the first uh, Prime Minister of Japan to seek uh, to speak at the summit since 2014. Okay, so for Japan also it's a very important one. And as I told, after COVID, after two years it is happening. So it is a very very important event this year. Which of the following are false about Powassan virus? Recently, huge number of cases spread in Wayanad, Kerala. The virus is endemic to South Asia and Southeast Asia. One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. So this is again asking where it was there spread and whether this is correct and whether it is endemic, meaning it is found only there and originated there. Which are the following are false about Powassan virus. 
So here one mistake people will do is they will not read this particular thing. They are asking for false statement and here both of the statements ideally should be uh, false because this is not something which is related to India. So both 1 and 2 are uh, false. Okay. Recently a woman died in United States due to infection of a tick-borne Powassan virus. She was in her 90s. She is the second person to test positive in 2022. It is a flavi virus which is transmitted by ticks. The virus is found in North America and Russia Far East. It is named after the town of Powassan, Ontario in Canada, which is bordering USA as well. Okay, so it was first identified in 1958 and uh, it is found in warm climate across Eurasia. In Eurasia, it is part of tick-borne encephalitis virus complex. In Russian Far East, it appears to be introduced there 70 years ago. So it's mostly in the northern parts of uh, USA, Canada, Russia, you can tell. And there are two types of it. There is lineage 1 and lineage 2. Lineage 1 is labeled as prototype lineage. Lineage 2 is labeled as deer tick virus, DTV lineage. So anything you see in the UPSC question paper is all related to related to the Powassan virus. Okay. So again, uh, very, very uh, detailing uh, things and all is not required because it's not there in India. But you should know there is no specific medicine and there is no symptoms uh, most of the times. So this was there in the international news article. Okay. So because science and tech can come from any particular thing, the disease and virus and all because of the COVID thing, after that every disease becomes important. Last two years, if you see, UPSA have asked very difficult questions on uh, virus and genetics and mRNA, DNA, all these things, difficult questions have come. Okay. Now migration in India 2020-21 report was released by Ministry of External Affairs, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, Ministry of Home Affairs or Niti Aayog. So a report that to an Indian report, you have to know clearly who has released it. Okay. So migration and all, who deals with it, you can think about. That is one way of uh, solving this. But again, then you will maybe arrive at the answer as External Affairs or Home Affairs or maybe Niti Aayog because they also keep publishing report after the report. But here the answer will be Ministry of uh, Statistics and Program Implementation because they are the ones who make the reports of all the numbers. Okay, like how many people are employed, how many non-employed, how many this thing, everything are done by uh, Statistic and uh, Program Implementation Ministry. Okay, so you know COVID time, many people were migrating, right? Within India itself, they were, many were temporary visitors, meaning people who used to temporarily, sorry, permanently live in Bangalore working and all because of their job and all, temporarily they had to go back to they, uh, their hometowns. Okay. Or maybe uh, from urban cities, you have to go to the rural areas or within rural areas itself, you are moving from one place to another because COVID time, the jobs and everything was uh, changing. Okay. The people who used to do regular jobs that was not there or even work from home was there. So many things were there. So the migration related, all those statistics are there in this particular report, migration in India, 2020-21 report. So you can pause and read this, like how many percentage and all, because in mains, it is more important. For prelims, you don't need these numbers, but in mains, you have to know, okay, like pandemic forced, how many percentage of people, okay, more than 50 percentage of people that is men from urban India to rural it went okay and if you see 88 percentage uh, migration of women is there from rural to rural that is just because after marriage they move to their uh, husband's house okay so from one rural area to another rural area they are moving so women's migration is there so like that various reasons will be there and that is all uh, listed in this particular report okay migrants are those people whose last usual place of residence is different from present place of enumeration usual place of residence is a village or town where they stayed continuously for six months or more okay for survey temporary visitors in household were defined as people who arrived after march 2020 and stayed in household for 15 days or more meaning most of you would have already done you would have left your city where you're working or maybe you're studying maybe coaching classes there and then you because of the covid the coaching class was shut down and you went back to your hometown and you stayed more than 15 days in your hometown so that that is when you are a temporary visitor in your home. Okay, so like that, these things are reported here and it's an Indian Express article. Now, question number four, which of the following are true about PME Vidya program? Okay, so it's a scheme. Ministry of Education launched it as part of Atmanurbar Bharat Abhiyan in 2020. Diksha and Swayam Prabha TV channels are included under this program. It has recently received the UNICEF recognition. So you have to know when it was launched, what it includes and whether it has got any recognition. So these are the different aspects UPSC also covers. Okay, the launch, the ministry, what it includes, uh, its funding, then whether it is uh, giving, getting any awards. Okay, so that kind of things you have to know. So 2-3 only, 1-2 only, 1-3 only, 1-2-3. So here there, are, there is a chance that all the three statements can be correct because there is an option called 1-2-3. So think of it whether you are able to eliminate anything or the answer will be 1-2-3. So answer is B, that is one, two only. So the launch is correct, the included programs are correct, but it has got recognition of not UNICEF, it has got recognition of UNESCO. Okay, 
So PM eVidya program was launched by Ministry of Education as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan in May 2020. Uh, the program unifies all efforts associated to digital, on-air, online education in order to enable multi-mode access for imparting education using technology. Okay. So major initiatives are Diksha, Swayam Prabha TV channel, extensive use of community radio and other things. Okay, Shikshawani. Then special e-content for visually and uh, hearing impaired people. So these kind of things. Okay, if you see, these are all launched earlier itself, but all these things were combined to put under this program, this e-vidya scheme. Okay, and this particular the use of ICT under this thing has been get has got the UNESCO recognition, and it's called King Hamad bin Isa Ali Khalifa Prize. Okay, so that prize is actually a UNESCO recognition. Central Institute of Educational Technology has been awarded with this thing uh, for the year 2021. Okay, so it's got for the ICT information and technology and it's a constant unit of the NCRT. Now, this is some more information about that particular uh, award and all. It was established in 2005 with the help of Kingdom of uh, Bahrain and uh, it rewards individuals and organizations which are implementing outstanding projects and promoting creative use of technologies to enhance teaching, learning and overall education in digital age. Okay. So their jury and they select two projects. This is all not very important. And uh, the award was given in uh, uh, Paris. Okay, headquarters of uh, UNESCO. So here, uh, it, the sustainable development goal, you should know there are 17 goals and that education is uh, goal number four. So this kind of things will help in improving that uh, goal also. Okay. Now the last question, MCQ5. Giant Stingray seen in news refers to the world's largest recorded what? Is it crocodile, butterfly, migrating bird, freshwater fish? So last few years, if you see, you basically have asked certain ABC type questions like Masir is what, or Masir is a bird or a fish or a crocodile or like that. They have given a term and asking like, what is it? Okay, so on, on that basis only, we have also framed this question in our June current affairs. And like this, hundreds of questions are there. So you are enrolled means you can study from the PDF. The Plum series is just a revision for you. But for others, I know if you are coaching institute, whichever you are learning, have not taught all these things, then it will be a new learning for you. So please see to that you switch institutes at the right time because prelims is nearing. So here, giant stingray is a freshwater fish. Scientists have caught the world's largest recorded freshwater fish and it is in the Mekong River of Cambodia. This Mekong River is at least three times, four times in the last uh, six years, UPS have asked, okay. In the options, it will be there or in somewhere, it will be somehow mentioned. So please learn more things about Mekong River. It uh, measures almost four meters from snout to tail while weighed under 300 kg. It was captured under Wonders of the Mekong Project, which is a joint Cambodian-US research project. Okay, Cambodian-US has a project called Wonders of the Mekong and in that only they found this uh, big uh, fish. Okay, earlier recorded one was a 293 kg Mekong giant catfish. Okay, it was discovered in 2005 in Thailand. So this is a species of stingray belonging to the some Desertiidae family. It's not very important for you. It is found in large rivers and estuaries of Borneo and Southeast Asia. Okay. So historically, it is uh, widely distributed everywhere, South and Southeast Asia, largest freshwater fish as well as the largest stingray. Species grow up upwards 2.2 meter across and reaches 300 kilo weight. And then some basic uh, uh, things, okay, which is not very important, like what it is, what is the size, what is the color, okay. And about Mekong River, it's a transboundary river flowing in East Asia and Southeast Asia. It is the 12th longest river in the world and the third longest in Asia. Originating in the Tibetan plateau, it runs across China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam. So you can imagine the length from the Tibet area, it is coming till the South Vietnam. Okay. And this is a Hindu science and tech article. So these were the five questions for today. And again, because students were asking like whether Plum series alone will help them clear prelims, that answer is obviously no. Okay. Plums is just an initiative to improve or look or improve the way you look at questions, how to eliminate, how to see how difficult questions comes, how UPSC have been framing questions in the past. So I will guide you in all those things. Okay. In, in fact, our teachers, all our teachers will guide you in the, these things every day. But simply just by watching 5 MCQs, by 175 days, you will get how many? You will get uh, maybe 1000 questions you will get maximum. With that 1000 questions, you are not going to clear because very serious aspirant are solving a lot of questions every day because they will solve at least one paper every day, 100 questions every day. And by the exam time, they will uh, solve at least 8000, 10,000 questions. So you have to be on par with them. Okay, the serious aspirants are solving a lot of questions. So please see to it that you are reading newspaper daily. You have at least one good test series and you are solving 10,000 plus MCQ along with previous year papers. Okay, 2016 to, 2016 to 21, all questions are already there free of cost in my channel. I have taken for free and more will come. 
so be observant and interested about world happenings not just by hearting books okay you have to be that serious aspirant who is actually interested in changing the things around you like you tell okay you learn by hearted things for your interview like i want to make an impact in society i want to change the world i want to help the poor you tell all these dialogues but you actually don't know where are the poor people there how are they poor why are they not improving their uh, things okay why is still malnutrition there why is still hunger there you should know the statistics of india your region your uh, neighbors everything you should know okay so you should be interested in such things and if you are rolling to the test series you will get a detailed subject coverage and entire 100% syllabus will be covered that's my guarantee okay because we have been designing in such a way that questions will come from our test and 100 plus marks can be solved in prelims okay that's a guarantee if you study it problem is most people don't study it and then tell like okay so exam was very difficult test series was not at all useful but every year our students are clearing okay 10 15 students are clearing prelims 2 3 students are clearing mains so because our number is less meaning the enrollment is less the success is also less the more and more students uh, enroll in future we'll have more number of students who will be clearing the uh, upsc okay so whenever something happens we will always publish it you can go and search it you can search vice versus upsc in youtube and you will get all the details so current affairs alone subject wise if you need okay meaning year wise 12 months 12 months uh, slot if you need you can enroll to this and this will cover your entire current affairs which is needed for prelims okay so that's our guarantee just enroll and start learning today itself because exam is nearing and next uh, the episode okay next episode of plums will come tomorrow and that is uh, like uh, today is sunday so tomorrow monday it will come that is uh, history okay that again i'll be taking so you can wait for that episode so thank you and have a nice day